Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. SEC Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim jong Gary really upped the ante today in a speech. Um, I think it makes it pretty damn clear that the attack by the SEC on XRP, the XRP community, and all of crypto just intensified. He is taking his approach to another level, and I kid you not, he is now describing social media participants as participants in a common enterprise. And as you may be aware at this point, uh, whether or not there's a common enterprise surrounding an asset is a prong of the four-prong Howey test. Although it's interesting he was even willing to talk about that today because a lot of the time he likes to pretend that common enterprise doesn't even exist. I don't know, but today it did apparently because he's Kim Jong Gary and he gets whatever the hell he wants. This gratuitous jackass. He can't even delineate between a freaking... Uh, social community online and a common enterprise in which efforts are made to increase the value of something. Unbelievable. So I'm going to share with you some of what was said in this vomit-inducing, very long speech, along with comments from participants in the crypto space, specifically some lawyers from the XRP community, including attorney John Deaton and attorney Jeremy Hogan. But before the vomit inducement begins, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Uh, now, just as a warning, based on what Gary Gensler has said, if you comment on this YouTube video, you may be participating in a common enterprise. And why? Because reasons, folks. Come on, because reasons. Here's a headline from Coindesk covering this fiasco. Crypto doesn't need more guidance, SEC Chair Gensler says. The crypto industry does not need any specific rulemaking for projects issuing tokens, U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission Chairman Gary Gensler said in a speech Thursday. Framing the issue... As one of investor protection, Gensler said the rules and regulations that crypto issuers and service providers must abide by have been clear for years. I just got to pause. Every time I hear that BS claim, I'm just sitting thinking, oh, OK, so you say they're super clear. How come everybody else in the damn space says they're not? You don't see this problem with companies that are uh, just in, in legacy finance, uh, companies that uh, wish to issue uh, the stock. You know, on, uh, it, it will become public companies and issue stock on uh, the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. You, you don't see people bitching about there not being clear rules there. How come it's just with crypto? Might it be because there actually are not clear rules and you're lying? You sack of you know what? <sighs> Peace continues. Nothing about the crypto markets is incompatible with the securities laws, Gensler said in his prepared remarks to the Practicing Law Institute. Investor protection is just as relevant regardless of underlying technologies, end quote. So there you go. Everything's clear as day. We don't need any special guidance. Everything's all figured out. There's no problem. It's just a bunch of bad actors. And, and it's been very clear for years, by the way, that uh, social media uh, constitutes a common enterprise. Just even talking about cryptos. I, I kid you not. Take a look at this. If you think I'm kidding about this, I got to scroll a little bit further to get to it. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is ridiculous. The public is investing for a better future based upon the efforts of others, Gensler said. That's, so that's a quote from him. And then here's the rest. There's websites you go to. There's medium posts that you read. There's crypto Twitter. There's Reddit forums and places you can look for information. And it's about that common enterprise and that entrepreneurial effort, which is the hallmark of investment contracts which are securities, end quote. That's directly from the mouth of Kim Jong Gensler today. If you are participating on Twitter, crypto Twitter, talking about crypto on Reddit or any of the like, you're part of the common enterprise. Holy freaking hell. So, so take a look at this. Attorney Bill, who is a member of the XRP community, he shared that on social media, uh, which means that he's part of the common enterprise too, obviously, right? And he said the following. And this is from Attorney Bill. Wow, Gensler stretches the third and fourth prongs of Howie. It's not a reasonable expectation of profits based on efforts of others. It's investing for a better future based upon others' efforts. And somehow getting information on Reddit and Twitter is part of the common enterprise. 
That's exactly what Attorney Bill said. Now, Attorney John Deaton responded to that with the following, and, and he's pointing out here, as you'll see, that this is in line with what the SEC is arguing in the SEC v. Ripple case. This is exactly what they're arguing. Here, I'll pull up. A, there's a, a pull this up full screen for those of you that care to look. Uh, this is a snippet from the actual suit, the, 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 the actual initial legal complaint against Ripple. And here's what Attorney John Deaton said, and then I'll read the, the little clip that he shared on the screen. Attorney Deaton said, Investors who purchased XRP in the offering invested into a common enterprise with other XRP purchasers as well as with Ripple, end quote. So that's part of what's on the screen, right? And, and then Deaton said, The offering includes today's sales of XRP independent of Ripple. The SEC is claiming all token holders are in a common enterprise with each other. That's right, folks. Even if you don't know about Ripple, if you have bought XRP, you are in a common enterprise, according to Kim Jong Gary, with every other XRP holder on the planet, even if they're not in the United States, because reasons. That makes sense. They don't have jurisdiction, uh, jurisdiction over that crap. But hey, because reasons, you're in a common enterprise with them. Now, here's what the clip that John Deaton shared says in its entirety. It's the part on your screen here. Uh, the, the title is Purchasers of XRP Invested into a Common Enterprise. Investors who purchased XRP in the offering invested into a common enterprise uh, other XRP purchasers, as well as with Ripple. Uh, because XRP is fungible, the fortunes of XRP purchasers were and are tied to uh, one another, and each depend on the success of Ripple's XRP strategy. So there you go. It's John Deaton's been pointing this out for over a year and a half now. But it's just, it's even worse. And you'll see as we go through this, it gets even more repulsive. No, no, no. If you thought it was going to get a little less vomit inducing, no, 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 no. Get, get that vomit bag back in front of you because you might need it, son. I'm just telling you. Um, so, so then there was this from uh, Coindesk. They were citing, they are previewing the morning speech on their Twitter account. And they, this is a quote from Gensler, which reads as follows. We are a cop on the beat. That's what Congress set us up, set up in the 1930s, but we work with market participants. Did you hear that part? That's the quote. We work with market participants. Now, this is where Library jumped in. Now, as most of you know at this point, Library is being sued into oblivion because uh, by the SEC because allegedly they're selling an un un unregistered security, which is, I just think, complete and utter nonsense. But here's Library's response, because again, there's this whole come in and talk to us thing, right? You know, we're here to work with market participants. That's a quote from Gary Gensler today. And Library said, in response to that, Gary Gensler is flat out lying. We came in voluntarily, voluntarily gave thousands of pages of info, and all evidence was only used to sue us, never given a single sentence of feedback or adjustments possible. The SEC is full of lying psychopaths. Trust none of them. That's the quote. And that is spot on. They fit the definition of psychopaths. There is something wrong with these people. They say, they, they're lying to the public. I'll oh, just come in and talk to us. But then when you do, you don't get feedback. But not only do you not get feedback, you're at the front of their list for entities they want to sue because they have to do less homework. It's easier for them. You just laid it in their lap. You're just a law-abiding citizen trying to make sure you're doing right. No way to move forward with these people. These are terrible creatures. The SEC is complete trash. Complete and utter trash. Um, and and um, then Attorney John Deaton wrote this. Have you noticed how Gary Gensler gets more and more aggressive in his language regarding crypto? He started by saying some tokens have attributes of securities. Then many tokens resemble securities to now many are securities. Next will be most are securities. He says the exchanges have an obligation to come in and register the tokens as securities, but will never say which tokens are securities. Notice how he keeps the focus on exchanges. He is planning to sue Coinbase, Binance, etc. This has been a step-by-step -step plan for over a year. Now, he is spot on right there. He is absolutely spot on. So that's what I was kind of saying at the, uh, at the outset of the video. He's upping the ante. He's getting more aggressive. Uh, he just he feels more and more empowered the more time passes. He's getting away with this so far, which is why whatever happens in the SEC v. Ripple case is of extreme importance. He needs to, you know, just get put back in his place a bit, right? Which is under the bridge with the Bitcoin Maxi Trolls. They can hang out together. That's cool. Um, now, he does go on to state also that, um, where, where was the part here? He was talking about, um, it might be right here. I don't, I don't feel like I need to read it, but he was, 
he was talking about, actually, I'll read this part. There's a part about crypto intermediaries. Crypto intermediaries, whether they call themselves centralized or decentralized, e.g. a DeFi, often are, uh, are an amalgam of services that typically are separated from each other in, uh, in the rest of the securities markets, exchange functions, broker-dealer functions, custodial and clearing functions, and lending functions. Quote, that's a quote he said in the speech. So it kind of makes you wonder, um, in a way, I'm kind of surprised. I don't know if they felt like that would have been too much to tackle at the time, or, or, or if from a legal perspective, they can come back and do this later after the, the case settled. But uh, why aren't they, why didn't they, they in the lawsuit cite that the XRP ledger is an illegal exchange, right? Because there's a built-in decentralized exchange. Uh, now, Ripple can't shut it down. Nobody can control it. You know, there's no one entity anyway that can control it. I'm just kind of so. What's the case? Like, is, is that going to be a factor moving forward? Is that something also we need to be concerned about? It makes me makes me rather curious here. And um, and they also cite he also cited. And I don't want to read his whole speech, at least not in this video. I'll, I don't know if anyone's interested. Maybe I'll talk about going through the consider going through the whole thing in another video. It's pretty bad though. But the, this coin that's why I use this coin desk article as a like a point of reference because they they get like kind of the main bullet points that I wanted to talk about anyway, including stable points that coins. Now, stable coins, the idea of a stable coin being a security is more ridiculous than even claiming XRP is a security. And I mean that. Now, you know, XRP is my favorite cryptocurrency on the planet. It's, it's my, personally my largest holding. If you've been following me for a while, you know my stance there. But in terms of what's more absurd to claim as a security, a stable coin, which is always worth the same amount of money, you know, one of the prongs of the Howey test uh, it's, it's like you call it the site well you can order them however you want but the, the first one is typically listed as uh, the first prong is an investment of money that'd be number one and then two with the expectation of profit and then there's two more well if you're putting money into a stable coin are you expecting the stable coin to be worth more in the future no <laughs> Kim Jong Ginzer just wants his hands on every so you see like that's even more ridiculous and I'm more offended by what he's done in terms of going after XRP and Ripple and XRP holders because that's been extremely damaging. I'm way more offended because that actually happened. But in terms of conceptually, what's more ridiculous? A stable coin? What in the ever-loving hell is wrong with this creature? What is this creature's malfunction? I just, I don't understand. It doesn't make any damn sense. <sighs> it's really grinding my gears, folks. And then there is this from uh, attorney Jeremy Hogan. He shared a tweet from Coindesk which was a quote of Gary Gensler's, which reads as follows. Ultimately, it's about protecting uh, the investing public. And if the investing public is investing in crypto, to have some protection. So that's the quote. Here's what attorney Jeremy Hogan had to say. But it's not about protecting the public. If it was, the SEC would tell us clearly, don't buy XYZ token because it's a security. And you would then focus enforcement efforts on scams and frauds. That is clear. What is not clear is why the SEC is not protecting us. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, then, and then there's uh, something from Stuart Alderide, and he was referencing um, part of the speech, and I think that part of the speech that I need to get to was also included in this article from Coindesk. It was uh, from Joseph Kennedy, who was... Uh, here, I'll just search for it. Joseph. Oh, maybe it's not. Okay, it must just be in the speech, then I couldn't remember. Let's just pull that, Joseph Kennedy. That must be the second one down here. Yeah, uh, or no? Oh, yeah, no, it is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is it. So th th this was referenced. Um, yeah, here we go. So this is from the, the first SEC chair. The, it's a quote right at the tail end. This is what Gary Gensler said to wrap up his speech. First SEC chair, Joseph Kennedy. And so it, 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 Kim Jong Gensler says, as Joseph Kennedy put it, and this is a quote from Joseph Kennedy now, no honest business need fear the SEC, end quote. Oh, is that right? Is that right? No honest business, like library, like Ripple, no, no, they, no need to fear. The, what about Dragon Chain? No need to fear the SEC. Now, as it turns out, not that I pretend to know a bunch about Joseph Kennedy, but Stuart Alderati seemed to know a little bit because he had a different quote from Joseph Kennedy. Take a look at this. This is from Stuart Alderati who is Ripple's general counsel, which means that he's Ripple's top in-house legal guy. And he tweeted out earlier today the following. Another famous quote from Joseph Kennedy. And this is a quote, this is right now. I wanted power. I thought money would give me power, and so I made money 
only to discover that it was politics, not money, that really gave a man power, end quote. <laughs> That's pretty damning, isn't it? So Joseph Kennedy, hey, any honest business, nothing to fear. By the way, I'm a power-hungry egomaniac. But no need to fear. No need to fear, right? <laughs> is, is, that a rec is that requisite to run the SEC, to be a power-hungry egomaniac psychopath? Because that I would buy. That, would, that I would absolutely buy. And then Stuart Alderati says, make no mistake, this is a political power grab. It's not the law, and it's not good policy, and it's at your expense. Ain't that the truth? And then uh, Attorney John Deaton retweeted that and wrote the following. Gary Gensler has the Ripple XRP case pending in the Second Circuit in Southern District, New York, the Library LBC case in the First Circuit uh, in New Hampshire, and the Dragon Chain case in the Ninth Circuit in Washington. He is now also suing individuals for selling nine tokens as unregistered securities in the Wahi case. In the Ripple case, the SEC has declared all XRP, including XRP, traded in the secondary market independent of Ripple securities. The token itself is a security per se. In the library case, the SEC argued utility is irrelevant and even if 90% of the token holders acquired LBC for non-investment use, if one person expected a profit, all LBC are securities. In Dragon Chain, the Dragon token is an ERC-20 token and is governed by the Ethereum network. Thus, the sufficient decentralization argument may not be supported by Gensler moving forward. Exactly, so pause. That is in line with what I've been saying uh, fine, I got it. Jay Clayton, that little asshat, and Hinman, that little asshat, and others, that burger guy, all of them, uh, they, they were the guys at the top of the SEC at the time, running the place. They're gone now. So all that stuff that was in place, and, and in terms of alleged market guidance, all that stuff, I mean, it was, it was guidance, but in terms of is it still something that should be respected and followed, right? Well, definitely not respected, but should it be followed? Uh, I'm not convinced of that. <laughs> Look at what's happening here. Going after an ERC-20 token? You know, built on the Ethereum network? Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, no, Ethereum's not safe. I, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not predicting that they're going to get to... They might. I don't want them to. But th they're not safe. No, these, it's a whole different crew in, in, in charge now. And Gary Gensler, four years ago, he said that he believed that there was a strong case to make that Ethereum is a security, right? And then there was this. There was a snippet from the this, this speech uh, today shared by Attorney Hogan, and he, he turned it into a screen grab, so I don't have to pull up the actual speech, but it reads as follows. Then I'm going to share with you Attorney Jeremy Hogan's comment. So here's, here's part of what, uh, what Gary Gensler said, and I'm going to warn you that this is, uh, for some, going to be vomit-inducing. So if you're concerned about potential upchuckery, I don't know if you've got some nice furniture around, uh, maybe if you're not close enough to make it to a bathroom, I encourage maybe getting like a little trash can or a little baggie or something like that, just in case some upchuckery uh, should should uh, should arise. You know, because I I don't I don't want to be the reason to make make your day worse. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Gary Ginzer is doing enough of this, right? But here's what he said: of the nearly ten thousand tokens in the crypto market, I believe the vast majority are securities. Offers and sales of these thousands of crypto security tokens are covered under the securities laws. Some tokens may not meet the definition of a security, what I'll call crypto non-security tokens. These likely represent only a small number of tokens, even though they may represent a significant portion of the crypto market's aggregate value. Why do I think a majority of crypto tokens are securities? As Justice Thurgood Marshall put it in describing the scope of the securities laws, Congress painted the definition of a security, quote, with a broad brush, end quote. He further stated, quote, Congress's purpose in enacting the securities laws was to regulate investments in whatever form they are made and by whatever name they are called, end quote. In general, the investing public is buying or selling crypto security tokens because they are expecting profits derived from the efforts of others in a common enterprise. So there we go, making small and making light of what's actually going on in the world. And here's what attorney Jeremy Hogan said to lambast that concept. He said, almost all restaurants are in violation of the health code. How do I know? Because the government gave us a broad powers 
to gave us broad powers to enforce the health code. End quote. And then he signs it as if it's an actual quote. Chair Ginzer, if he was head of the local health department. There you go. Broad powers. It is whatever he says it is, which is why I call him SEC Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim Jong Gary, aptly named so far as I'm concerned. Then Attorney Deaton retweeted that from Hogan and said, Ginsler gets more assertive each talk. Now most are securities. Next week or month it will be the vast majority of these are securities, and then later only a couple tokens are not securities. Spot on. That's Attorney Deaton absolutely hitting the nail on the head. And everybody can see this. Everybody that's being intellectually honest can see this. The only people that believe this tripe are people at the SEC. And I'm not, I'm not even convinced all of them believe it, but maybe they'll give lip service to it, but that's about it. This is complete and utter garbage, and he should be ashamed of himself. <sighs> Feels good to say it, though, doesn't it? I feel all better. <laughs> it, it helps a little bit. So uh, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below, but just be warned, if you do, according to Gary Ginzer, it sounds like you're part of a common enterprise in crypto. So just be, just be careful out there. You just be careful out there because this guy's stupid AF. Freaking idiot stick. What a freaking jackass. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say, all right? That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.